Hi there. I got a letter this week from Megan Emberton in Utah. And Megan has a wood turning channel called Wood Turning by Me. <laughs> Get it? Megan Emberton, M-E by me. Never mind. I want to say thank you to Megan for sending this to me. It'll be on my virtual wall now whenever I use it. And I hope you'll take a moment or two and take a look at her channel. Subscribe, see what she's doing, send her a little love. Thanks again, Megan, for sending it in. And now I'm gonna go and get a few things put together here and I'll show you what today's video is all about. I'll be right back. I have four segmented rings here left over from previous projects. This one has 24 segments. These two are both 16, and this one is 48. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the wider the segment is, this is the width of a segment, across here is the length, the wider it is, the more likely you, you are to see a gap. This 24 segment ring is real good, came out just fine, but I started seeing some problems recently. I did a 48 segment clock, turned out real good, but some of the viewers said they would like to see me do a 60 segment clock so that there could be one segment for each minute. Okay, never thought of that, so I decided I would do that. So let me show you what I was doing. These are the parts for my wedgie sled. This is the wedgie sled itself. This is the adjuster, which I use to adjust the length of the segments. And this is an insert for my table saw with a little wedge-shaped bar on the side for the segments to roll away from the blade. This is the wedge I made up with my CNC router to cut 60 segments. I don't have the real good and expensive software to use with my CNC machine, so I had to draw it up in a drawing program called Inkscape, save it as an SVG file, and then import that into my CNC software. I did it three times, and every time I had a problem where there would be a gap. First I'm going to show you what I mean by the gap and how I fix that in case you have to do half ring segment gluing. As you can see, there is a huge gap between these two halves of this ring. What I want to do is trim them off on my sled. The two clamps you see are holding that one half of the ring down and the inside points are even with the cut edge of the sled. Now with that first half ring cut, I can clamp down the second half and do the same on it. And that should leave me with two half rings that will glue up perfectly. Okay, what did I really mean when I said perfect? I didn't mean it turned this into a perfect 60 segment ring. I meant that cutting with the sled to clean up those edges allowed me to glue this back up and the joint is perfect. But if you look closely, 
hopefully this will show up on the camera, you can see that one side of that joint is tapered, but the other one is basically a rectangle. So while from a distance this might look okay, it's certainly not good enough to do a clock with. It just wouldn't work. Now, what caused this? I'm convinced it was not, in fact, this wedge. The wedge, I believe, is perfect. The problem, when I looked closely, turned out to be the sled. Now, as you know, as I know, as we should all know if we're woodworkers, wood moves. Even dry wood like this will move eventually. And I hadn't checked it, I, so I hadn't noticed, but this particular one right here had moved a little bit. And when I put a straight edge along it, finally, I could see that there was a slight gap. There was a bit of light showing there. And that's all it takes, because if I take a piece of wood that's straight along here and push on it against that area, then it's bringing this end out and totally ruining the angle. So I took these off, I jointed the edges, put them back on, and I think this is going to work out perfectly. So now what I have to do is make another 60 segment ring and just see how well that turns out. Have you ever had one of those days? <laughs> so I decided I would make another 60 segment ring, dialing everything in just as well as I possibly could. And this is it. And I noticed when I put it together, there was some light showing on the inside between some of the rings. And I couldn't figure that out. I mean, it just made no sense. How much more can I do to make it work right? So I thought, okay, I'll make another one. So I made another one, and I honestly forget, I think these are three inches wide, and I'd expect to see a lot of light coming through, but I didn't. Right at the end, in a few places, you could see just a sliver of light, but very little. Now this didn't make any sense to me at all. <clears throat> I had uh, sanded all the fuzzies off just as well as I did that. Oh, that reminds me. Someone asked me recently what I mean by sanding off the fuzzies. Well, when you put these, put your board through the table saw, on the bottom, there are gonna be little slivers, if you want, little, what I call fuzzies. Also, on whichever end comes through last, the same thing. So I just take sanding blocks, I sand those off real well, because if you leave them there and they get between the segments, you're gonna have a problem. Things are not gonna line up right. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah. <laughs> so I went back to this one, thinking how can this one show light between them if this one doesn't? And I looked at it, and I looked at it, and finally noticed that where there are four segments between each of these walnut segments, one of those quadrants, if that's the right word, had five segments in it. All the other ones had four. And what do you think? Could that maybe throw things off just a little bit? <laughs> it did. So, now I've got it dialed in and I can make these perfectly. Um, what, I, what I'm gonna do with this though, is I'm not gonna glue it up in one piece. I'm not gonna do half ring because it's not working. I'm going to do it probably in four quadrants because I found when I glued this one up, by the time I got around, even using Type On 3, which has a long open time, it was drying up and I couldn't get it to clamp up properly. I had a heck of a time with it. So because of how many segments there are, I'm probably gonna do this in four quadrants and we'll see how that works out. <laughs> One thing I should probably mention, some people may not know what I'm talking about when I say that I'm gluing up a ring in a half ring method. By that I mean taking half of the segments, 
on each side of these two dowels. So in this case, there are 30 on this side, 30 on this side. When you put the glue on and tighten it up with the clamps, they can shift on these dowels. So if there are any gaps in there, and if there aren't, why would you do this? But any gaps that are in there will close up because it's able to shift. After you've glued it up, when everything is dry and you take this apart, if you put a straight edge across here and across here, you will find that at least one of those is not straight. There is going to be a gap when you put them together. So what I do is I'll take a pencil and I'll color in on both of those surfaces, all four of them. Then I'll take one half of the ring and I'll put it on this sandpaper. I've used six inch by 48 inch sanding belts and I've got 150 grit on one side and 80 grit on the other side of this quarter inch glass. So it's nice and flat. Take that and just move it along there until all those pencil marks have disappeared. And then you know, then you will know that you've got a straight edge on both of these. Then you can take those two half rings, put them together and glue them up and you're done. In this particular case, I didn't want to do that because if I'm doing 60 segments for a clock, it's going to show up somewhere. On a lot of things, it won't matter. Okay, so what else can I come up with to show you about this? <laughs> well, you've probably had enough of listening to me babble. I want to thank you for stopping in. If you got this far in the video, Thank you, I'm impressed. Now, if you think someone out there might be able to get something out of this video, please share it with them. It'll help my channel, might give them a couple of ideas. I know I learned a little bit about the wedgie sled myself getting to this point. So again, thank you for stopping in. To those who have subscribed before, thank you so much. I can't begin to tell you how much I'd appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so and click the notification bell so you find out when I get the next video out. If you like this, click the like button, share it with others, and please come back next time. Between now and then, have a great day in your shop, and be safe. Bye-bye now.